My husband and I have been foster parents for a long time and then they approached us to be a medically fragile foster family. I think the kids need homes. Some of these kids are in residential facilities and basically equivalencies of nursing homes, hospitalizations, and these are kids. Yes, they have medical problems and yes, they need a lot of medical care, but they also need to be in a family. They need to play, they need to be comforted, they need to be, need to be hugged. So I'm so thrilled that we're able to provide homes for these kids. We went with Diacon in the very beginning because we liked the idea of, ha of a private agency to work with. With Diacon, we get more individualized, specialized trainings that you may not get uh, if you are going right through the county. Um, I feel more comfortable. I feel more prepared. What we provide for the child is the family to begin with. So again, there's the medical care and that's absolutely necessary, but a family who is, perhaps there's other children, the child's learning to socialize where they might not have been able to do that in a more institutional setting. When a placement is being arranged before the child's been placed, we try to coordinate the training that the family needs. A lot of the families get their training directly from the hospital. That's not something Diacon's providing firsthand, but we're arranging that that training can be provided to the family so they have what they need to, to care for this particular child. With fostering, I've never worked outside the home while we've had foster children uh, because I didn't do it with my own children. So, like, I, we, my husband and I decided, you know, we want to give them the attention that we would normally give our own biological children. We don't want to treat him differently because he has medical needs. Uh, we attend to the medical needs and we are aware of triggers or, you know, um, environmental things, but we try and help him have as normal of a life as possible. These are tough kids, they need a lot of one-on-one -on -one attention, so we're able to connect our families that are providing the medically fragile child with care with a respite provider, another family, where the child might be able to go overnight, some hours, a weekend, what have you. We're able to get away with respite. We had a vacation planned and we were able to get away and we had a whole team of people uh, who just stepped up and took care of him here while we were away. Our foster son's goal is to be reunified with his family and they are um, working towards that and um, we're still on the path of reunification. What we find is that many families think it is for the extremely serious cases that we talked about earlier, you know, for a child with some devastating diagnoses and some of the kids are not uh, as seriously impaired as some of the other ones. At DICON, like many other agencies, we have a strong need for additional families, uh, all kinds of families, especially families to provide uh, medically fragile foster care. And it's, it's scary. You don't know what exactly you're getting into. So what we can provide for families is information about these kids. We give them every piece of information we have. We let them know ahead of time while they're considering whether or not they want to be a medically fragile foster parent, what we can do for them, you know, how we can hook them up with services. While we have so many people involved, uh, we have our diacon workers and we have our nursing staff. We have family and friends who babysit him. As we're going, his, his care is getting less. He's really progressing. Um, the doctor appointments are further apart. And then most importantly, we try to help them see that these are kids and these kids make so much progress in these homes and the reward that a family will feel when that happens I think is really worth, worth the jump. Uh, again, it's for some people and not for others and that's okay, but what we really need are more families and we are trying our best to recruit more families, to train more families, to support the families. We will be supporting them all along the way, again, from pre-service training, through the decision to take a placement, through the decision to take this particular placement, and then of course through the placement itself.